Before you make that RV deal, I'm keeping it all the way real with my five best RV buying tips. Hey, hey, everybody. I just wanted to come on here real quickly. I wish I was coming to show you some exciting new place we were traveling to right now, but I'm not. I'm at home and uh, I'm gonna be grateful. How about that? <laughs> no complaining, okay? But I wanted to jump on here today because I've been reading my comments and by the way, I just wanna thank y'all so much for commenting, for watching the videos and for subscribing. Um, but a lot of the comments that I've been getting were from people who were saying they were considering buying an RV or they were in the process of buying an RV and they had some questions on what would I suggest that they look for, what are some of the buying tips that I had. And so I thought it would be great for me to just come on real quickly, talk to you about five of my top, my best RV buying tips to go ahead and give those to you for those of you who are in the market for RVs right now. Um, so first, uh, I want to say thank you so very much for commenting. And by the way, sometimes the comments show up in the comment section and then sometimes when I get ready to reply, they disappear. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the YouTube comments, but if I did not reply to your comment, because I really try to re reply to every comment that comes in the comment section, I feel like if you take the time to write to us, then I'm gonna take the time to respond. So I just wanna say thank you for that. And if I haven't, if you replied or sent a comment and I did not reply, then maybe I didn't see it. So please don't take offense to that because my goal is to reply to everyone. So let me get my disclaimer out there first. I am not an RV buying expert, okay? <laughs> I wanna say that first off. Um, but I have learned a lot through my buying experience that I want to share with you and I've also learned a lot through research and talking with other RV owners over the years now I'm not this is not the video where we're gonna talk about a checklist because there are tons of checklists online if you're buying a pop-up a C-class an A-class it doesn't matter what type of RV you're interested in. If you Google, do a search online, you will be able to find a plethora of websites that will give you a checklist. So this is not that. The information I'm gonna share with you will not be on your checklist. I almost can guarantee that. So let me go ahead and get started. My first tip is make sure you have an RV experience. Now I know that may sound kind of dumb, like what kind of tip is that? But I promise you, stay with me. It is a very good tip and you'll see why. A lot of people end up buying an RV without understanding what RVing is all about. They don't understand the concept of setting up an RV or tearing down a campsite, breaking down the RV. They don't understand the maintenance that's involved in an RV. And then sometimes they just think they need something in an RV that they're never gonna use and they spend more money and then they end up having buyer's remorse after they've made their purchase. So the idea of experiencing RVing before you decide to purchase is a good one because it gives you an opportunity to see what goes into actually taking an RV out for the weekend. It's so much more than getting into a car and just driving off. It's, it's really not like that at all. There's a lot of work once you get to the campsite to set up and things you have to maintain to make your experience enjoyable. So I always suggest that people rent an RV first and take it out for a weekend so that you can get an idea of what it's like to set up an RV. Um, you also can learn a little bit about maintenance that way. And then also, if you have a friend who has an RV, that's even better. If you can get your friend to take you out for a weekend and let your friend explain to you the maintenance that they do for, on their RV, the equipment they need to do the maintenance, and then also they can talk to you about the things you need that is not included in your RV purchase. So these are things that you will learn by experiencing RVing. So once you go out, you'll understand that you need to have proper hoses, you need to have gauges, you need to have power surge, and you need to have treatment for your water, your fresh water tank, your 
gray water tank as well as your black water tank so there's a lot that goes into rving and under actually experiencing being out in an rv will help you to know that and i've had friends who actually come out with us and has said to me we were thinking about purchasing an rv but after we saw all the that's involved in taking care of an rv we changed our mind so a lot of times even the idea of handling the sewer hose is too much for some people so just make sure that you know exactly what's involved and also it gives you an idea of what to look for when you're shopping for your rv do they already have proper hoses that are in good condition do they already have gauges that they're gonna throw in? It could be a negotiation tool for yourself as well. So rather than you having to buy it, then maybe you can negotiate for it to be in your purchase. So my second tip would be, make sure you understand how you like to camp. It's important that you know this because when you're shopping for an RV, you don't want to buy an RV that is not equipped with what you want to have when you're out camping. And you definitely don't want to buy an RV that has more than what you need because then you'll be paying for stuff and you'll have buyer's remorse. So you want to make sure that you get something that has what you need, not too much and not too little. And the only way you're going to know what you need is if you know what kind of camping you like to do. There are some people who like to do boondocking. Now boondocking just refers to you're gonna be out in the wilderness, you're gonna be sustained only by what's in your RV. You're gonna be using the water from your water tanks, you're not gonna be hooked up to electricity, you're gonna use the electricity that is generated through your RV, whether you have lithium batteries or you have solar panels, whatever the case may be, you're only going to use and be sustained by what's in your RV. There's no sewer, there's no water, there's no um, electric hookups to your RV while you're camping. Some people enjoy that type of camping. If that's what you think you want to do, then you definitely want to look for an RV that may already be equipped with solar panels or has larger water tanks and lithium batteries and things of that sort. Make sure you know what kind of camping you want to do and then that way you won't waste your time looking at an RV that's not equipped because that's going to cost you more on the back end. For some people, they exclusively want to camp at campgrounds and you know that will be full hookups that may have pools and other uh, amenities um, you know just decide what you're looking for and then think about who's camping with you are you going to have kids with you where are they going to sleep you want to look at all these kind of things before you make your purchase now i will say to you if your kids are older teenagers or young adults I would not actually include them in your RV purchase in terms of the size of your RV. And I know that sounds like, what? Go leave the kids out? Yes, let me tell you why. <laughs> now, you do what you wanna do, okay? Do what you wanna do, but let me tell you uh, what we did and why I'm saying what I'm saying. So we decided that since we have grown kids and a grandson, that we would get an RV large enough for everybody to have a bed to sleep in and um, we would have lots of room for everybody. Well, let me tell you something. My grown kids, they ain't got time for us, okay? They got their own life, they're doing their own thing. Uh, I very rarely get to get everybody together to get time off from work at the same time so that everybody can go on a trip together. Maybe once a year, we're able to pull that off. So why buy or make a huge purchase for uh, people who may not even show up? So if, it, if you don't know if they're gonna come, then I tell you what, let them joining you be a bonus. If they come and you have room, then okay. And let's face it, you are camping. If you don't have sleeping room inside your RV, they can come ride in the RV or in the, if you've got a travel trailer, they can ride in the truck, follow you and bring their tents. So for my next tip, I wanna talk about RV inspections. Do I suggest RV inspections or do I think you can skip it? Well, it depends. 
And let me tell you why I say this. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind when you're talking about an RV inspection. Number one, if you want to get an RV inspection, expect to spend between $400 and I think $600 is the going rate for RV inspections. Just be prepared. Know what the going rate is in your area and you can find that out easily by just doing a Google search. Now, if you decide that you want to use an inspector, which I do recommend you do if you're buying from an individual, have the RV checked out because sometimes people get rid of RVs that they know they know has problems, right? But they wanna pass that problem on to you. So what you should do is have it checked out by an inspector and you can find one at uh, NRVIA, I believe it is. You can go to that website and search for an inspector in your area. Now, if there isn't an inspector in your area, like in our case, there was no inspector in our particular area for that website. But what you can do is search for mobile techs because a lot of those guys that do the inspections, they have mobile RV tech businesses. And so you can look for them. They may not be listed with NRVIA, but they are mobile techs. They know a lot about RVs. Many of them, of course, own RVs themselves, and they can be very helpful in looking at the RV with you to determine if it's worth the purchase. So in that regard, yes, I absolutely do think using an RV inspector is good only caution that i have about an rv inspector and this is something that i promise you you will not see on anybody's checklist and i'm telling you this because this is what we experienced in my mom's last purchase my mom has actually purchased four rvs in her lifetime and in this last purchase um the inspector made the appointment with her was charging her around $500 to come out and do the inspection, but told her she could not be present during the inspection. So his reason was a lot of times the buyers have questions and they take up too much of his time while he's doing the inspection. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that's a no-no. If you run into somebody who tells you that, do not hire them you want to be present during the inspection okay you're paying out of your pocket for someone to do a service for you you want to one number one make sure they're doing it and doing what they say they're going to do right that's the first thing and then number two you're leaving the person you're hiring to inspect the rv all that time they're alone with the seller the seller is going to be there because the seller is certainly not going to leave the rv with a stranger right so your rv inspector may be there chatting it up with the seller and is he you know is he really going to be honest is he going to is that going to compromise what kind of inspection he gives you i don't know but i wouldn't take the chance and especially if you're dealing with a dealership because what i learned is that a lot of the dealerships they know these local rv inspectors because they have done business with them before in the past. There's not that many of them in an area. So they are known and they have relationships with the seller, with the dealership. There may be a conflict of interest. You know, maybe there's a little incentive to give a good review on the inspection. I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's the way I think. So. Like I said, this is stuff you're not going to see on the checklist, but just be aware. Now, does that mean don't hire an inspector to go to a dealership? No, not at all. But ask the questions. How many inspections have you done at this dealership? There's no harm in just knowing what type of relationship does this inspector have with the dealership just to make sure there is full integrity in your inspection and that you will be given a fair review. See how long the RV has been in usage. Just because an RV is, let's say, five years old, they may only used it twice. That is so common. You will not believe how many people actually purchase an RV. They find out it's not what they thought it was gonna be because they didn't do my first tip, which was they didn't have an RV experience. So once they did purchase the RV, they realized, 
I can't do this. A lot of times people are retired. They realize it's too much work for them. They don't feel comfortable driving it. You know, one reason after the other. And so the RV is purchased, the RV sits, and it's been sitting for four years. That is so common. So you want to make sure that you are not looking to purchase one that has not been in usage. RVs are just like houses. They must be used. If you are not in a house, you just let a house sit empty, you know how quickly, or you should know how quickly a house can go down. Things start growing up around it. The house just really looks worn down with no one in it. It's easy to happen. It's the same thing with your RV. The RV systems are designed to run. A generator needs to run. Engine needs to run. Your air conditioner, the water, the plumbing needs to have water flowing through it. If there's an RV that's just been sitting, a lot of times all of those systems have broken down in places that an inspector won't even be able to see from his own eyes. You won't realize that until after you've made your purchase and things start to break down. So I would be very cautious about considering an RV that's been sitting for a very long time. If the seller tells you, well, we bought this RV, we only used it twice and it's been sitting ever since, they think, you know, maybe telling you that they didn't really use it will really be something to entice you to buy it. But that's not impressive. That's not what you want to hear. You want to hear that they did get good use out of it and that it's a good RV and that the systems work properly and that the systems have been used regularly. So that brings me to another point. When you're going to look at the RV to do your initial inspection, don't let them have the RV ready and running. And you know, sometimes when you go, they say, oh, you know, we got it running. It's ready for you to walk through. Well, we don't want it running. What you want to do is have them crank it up in front of you. Have them crank it up and turn on all the systems so that you can see how it's done and that it's done easily and that there's no issues with it because if they had to right before you came they had to go and and get under the hood uh, go under the rv and, and tighten up something to get stuff running before you got there you wouldn't know because they've already done it so you want to make sure that the rv is not on that they turn everything on and off and on again right there while you're there so that you can um, make sure that everything is on the up and up. My last best tip is that you do research. Now I know that's vague. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to research. The first thing you should do is once you narrow down to what RV you're really interested in, then you should go to Facebook, go to Instagram, uh, go online and look for forums where that you can join for that particular brand. For example, if you're interested in a travel trailer, it's a Grand Design travel trailer, then you want to join the Grand Design forum, either on Facebook, every brand has one. So you want to join the owner's forum and you want to read comments and you want to see exactly what owners are saying because that's where you're going to find the real deal about a brand you're interested in purchasing. Now you only want to do this once you've narrowed down your choices to at least two. You will learn a whole lot. If there's something that is commonly a problem with that brand, you will find it there. Owners are very candid and they're very real. So you need to take note of the things that they are commonly talking about with that particular brand. Then that way you can check and see if there's an issue with the RV that you're interested in purchasing. Now, the next thing you wanna do, once you've narrowed down to at least two choices, then you wanna go online and you wanna pull the uh, spec sheets for those particular RVs. You can type in the year, the make, and the model of a particular RV and you'll be able to find spec sheets or uh, even owner's manuals. Sometimes you can get those right online. You can take those, read over them, and just kind of familiarize yourself with the RV. You're gonna need those specs for this next suggestion that I have, but it's really good to have those because that will tell you things like what size your water tank is. And um, that way you can determine if that is suitable for the type of camping that you want. 
what type of batteries, how many batteries. That will give you some idea when it comes to maintenance and replacing things. How many house batteries will you need to buy? What size tires? You can go ahead and do a search and see how much your tires will cost you when it's time to replace those. So you're gonna need to have some information, some specific information on that particular RV that's gonna be very helpful in making your final decision. Now, my next step is go to Nada Guides. Dot com. And when you get here, you want to go to the top here and click on RVs. And then what you can do is you can put in your RVs VIN number if you already have it and get some specifics about that particular one. But a lot of times you may not have the VIN number. So then you want to scroll down and you want to come and choose what type of RV that you're looking at. Let's say you're looking at a travel trailer. So you will click travel trailer then you will come down and you could put in the manufacturer and I'm just gonna go and just choose one I'm gonna say let's see here let's choose the Jayco now I'm gonna go also down here and I'm gonna choose the model And then I'm going to enter my zip code. So now that we have plugged in the make and the model for this 2020 Jayco Travel Trailer, what we're interested in finding on this website is some pricing information. So we get click on get pricing. You will be able to see that the suggested list price is 53,568. And then you can see that the low retail is $33,350. And then it tells you that the average retail sale was $40,200. So what this is saying to you is that even though the suggested retail price of this travel trailer was $53,568, the average sale was $40,200. And then the low end, the sale was thirty three thousand three fifty so your goal is to make sure that you are paying no more than the average retail sale and also as close to the low retail sale as possible you want to be somewhere between that thirty three thousand three fifty and forty thousand two hundred I'm gonna back up here because you can go in here and put in as many details as you know to get more exact pricing because with RVs, when you have upgrades like solid surface countertops or you have porcelain toilets or you have two air conditioners instead of one, those things add value to an RV and may adjust the cost or resale cost would be. So you can come in here and for your heating and your air conditioner, you would put down what type of air conditioner you have. Then you, I'm just gonna check a 15,000 BTU just for an example, you can check what kind of appliances you have here. You may have a gas grill cooktop. You're going to have um, a microwave convection oven, a refrigerator that's uh, 8 to 10 cubic feet. So you just go all the way down. You click everything that you know. If you don't know a detail, it's okay. It still gets you pretty close. For entertainment, you want to put in what type of TVs that come with the RV. You also want to talk about your awnings, your cabinets, your wheels, and on down this list. And once you get it all plugged in, you want to click continue. And then it will adjust the price as you can see here as these options have been added. So this will give you a more accurate cost of what the average sale would be for that type of travel trailer. And then this is again the low retail. So what you want to do is you want to stay somewhere between this 38485 and this 46385. If you can get below this 38485 then you know you've got a really good deal. But you definitely don't want to pay more than this 46385. For this example, I used a brand new travel trailer, but it doesn't matter if you're buying new or used. All you need to do is plug in the year, the make, and the model, and you'll get the same results.
this is the reason why it's very important that you have a spec sheet that gives you as much detail as possible on whatever particular RV you're looking at and if there's some details that's missing on that spec sheet you could ask the seller to give you some additional information that will help you to completely fill out this site and get accurate pricing using this online tool is free and it will keep you from paying too much for your RV purchase if these tips have been helpful to you please remember to like share and subscribe thanks for watching